Hello, and welcome to the Biomass Magazine podcast. I'm your host, Anna Simmet, and on this episode, our featured guest is Josiah Hunt, CEO of Pacific Biochar. Josiah, th- welcome to the podcast, and thanks for joining us. Hello, and uh, thanks for bringing me on the podcast. Absolutely. We're glad to have you here. So today we're here to talk about biochar. And I think let's begin by having you explain, you know, maybe more broadly, what is biochar and what can it do? Um, Well, biochar is a relatively new word for a very old material. Um, The word's got somewhat of a funny beginning. It's, It's basically just a mashup of the words biomass and charcoal. Mm-hmm. Um, biochar, uh, which is kind of funny because charcoal is basically biomass already. So it's kind of redundant in that. And from what I understand, the word only came about because the word agrochar was already trademarked. Oh. Um, and so, I mean, the real question is, is why did they feel as though they needed to come up with a new word for mm-hmm. a material that has existed for a long time and for um, a material that already has words for it? And, and, and the reason is because there was new ideas about what this material can do. And so the word biochar is intrinsically linked to climate change mitigation. So the idea kind of started, gosh, maybe all the way back in the eighties or nineties or so, there was some soil scientists doing work in the Amazon that found these in, unusually fertile soils with unusually high levels of charcoal. Mm -hmm. And after lots of hemming and hawing and lots of research, they identified charcoal as being the distinct component that allowed these soils to remain so fertile for so long. And then the idea furthered, it was like, hey, we've got piles of biomass so large, we call it waste. And you can take this waste biomass and turn it into charcoal in an energy positive fashion, and then take that charcoal and bury it in the ground, which will help improve soil fertility. And when you look at the whole process, it actually is carbon being removed from the atmosphere and sequestered in the soil. So it's solving these big global problems of food security and soil fertility, as well as carbon removal and building of soil. And so you know, you've got these different concepts all kind of hanging on to this material we just know as charcoal. And so I think that's, that's why they felt the need to give it a new name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so interesting. It's like this magic material. And um, you guys uh, at Pacific Biochar, you've been making it for how long? Oh, since 2008. Um, that was, I, that's how long I've been making it. So that, mm-hmm. was, that was before Pacific Biochar was really uh, officially formed as a company. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, since 2008, I started tinkering. And then in 2009, um, I, I transitioned to basically a career of, of biochar. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all I've been doing ever since. Tell us more about Pacific Biochar. Where are you guys located and what's your business model? You guys, from what I understand, you partner with biomass power plants for biochar production. Um, explain to us how that works. Yeah, so initial biochar production, you know, starting way back when the company was just for first tinkering, um, we tried all kinds of different ways of making biochar. And it wasn't till, till maybe 2014-ish or so that we began to really identify a method of biochar production that piqued our interest was that you could modify biomass power plants to achieve efficient biochar production. And so the company, that's when Pacific Biochar as a company really started. And we We founded the company here in California um, with the sole focus on becoming experts in this process of modifying biomass power plants for biochar production. So over the years, this is how we've figured out how to make it work best. Um, We become a manufacturing partner with the biomass power plant. 
where the first step would be a feasibility assessment, where we assess whether this is really possible Mm -hmm. and whether it's economically viable as well. From there, we would provide a at least an outline form of a of a guaranteed profitable contract for the for the for the biopass, biomass power plant manufacturing partner, and then if everyone's still on board, then we began to design and build the necessary infrastructure upgrades to produce biochar. Um, after that, we're in we're in production, and from there, Pacific Biochar um, manages all of the biochar. Um, logistics of deployment. So um, from biochar production from site to soil, we handle all the logistics and costs associated. And, you know, the the company has primarily existed on ag sales alone until, until just recently, but um, Pacific Biochar, uh, Pacific Biochar was the first company in North America to register carbon credits for biochar production in 2020. Oh. And that, mm-hmm. that kind of revolutionized what we've been able to do. And that adds a stability to, uh, to the revenue here. And so that's become a really critical part of what, we, of what we do. So not just managing all the biochar logistics, but now also managing the carbon credit registration and mm-hmm. optimization, uh, as well as all the accounting and reporting and all of the necessary contracts involved. We also serve as a point of contact for all of the biochar deployment and for all the carbon credit activities. And by acting as the manufacturing partner and the, um, the point of contact and kind of the face of that all uh, in continuing in that, we also provide some liability firewalls for all of the biochar and carbon credit activities so that the biomass power plant can focus on the uh, incredibly um, attention stealing a uh, constant chronically attention stealing task of producing energy from biomass which is uh, uh something i i just find quite amazing these machines that we that we operate yeah yeah so it seems like you just really take the burden you know off of these biomass power plants that might be hesitant you know not knowing what they're getting into so what i'm really interested in knowing is what makes a biomass power plant a good candidate for producing biochar? Can any biomass power plant make biochar? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it, you know, there's different, there's different modifications. There's different things that can be done to achieve biochar production at existing facilities. Um, so you can think of it as several different levels. Uh, internally, we've been calling it modification light and modification heavy as two different categories which is horrible naming mm-hmm. but you know is what it sticks as it's simple um, yeah yeah i guess and um so modification light what we refer to as modification light is essentially um uh, something that's a, it's a phenomenon that works well with stoker boilers so hydro grates um stoker grate uh you know kind of detroit stoker in the in that genre mm-hmm. uh, of, of boilers, uh, where oftentimes the combustion, um, you know, the furnace, the combustion chamber there, uh, there's some pyrolysis occurring. So some material is not being fully combusted and will leave that chamber in the form of charcoal, uh, which is then recaptured and sent back in as reinjection ash. Um, and so just simply hijacking that system um, is is what we call modification light. Just modifying that pathway, creating a new pathway to be able to harvest that charcoal instead of uh, sending it back in as reinjection ash. Um, that's one of the most simplest forms to do it. Um, there's definitely a, some nuance in, in pulling it off um, without causing other problems, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, that's the most simple form of doing it. And of course, then that's that's mostly with your Detroit Stoker genre. Um, with uh, fluidized beds, um, and, and that genre, there are some modifications that can be done where you would have an auxiliary system. So an auxiliary pyrolysis unit can be placed alongside the fluidized bed and feed the gases into the fluidized bed or serve as a preheat for the water or air. Um, mm. there, there's different ways to, to, to combine the two, but you'd have an auxiliary unit. So primarily, we're just looking at the modification light because the the barrier to entry is low. It's it's relatively quick and easy compared to putting in auxiliary units, which requires that we pull lots of permits. Um, mm-hmm. 
So most all biomass power plants can have some, but the Detroit Stoker genre is, uh, is ideal. Okay. Thank you. That was a great explanation. Um, I have a few more questions. You know, I think we'll jump to biochar. It's been around for a long time. Lots of hype, lots of interest. Um, it's crazy if we post a story on biochar, it gets so many hits. You know what? We haven't really seen a ton of growth, That not that what we'd expect. Why do you think that is? You know, what's the real opportunity here and why? Yeah, I... I feel that one, <laughs> you know, <laughs> basically, put, you know, I have a career in this industry since, you know, through all, through all those, uh, nothing burger kind of moments. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I feel that deeply. So, um, yeah, I think in the early days of biochar, there was just, uh, an extraordinarily, uh, high level of, of hype, um, without a lot of boots on the ground. There just wasn't really biochar production happening. Um, and, and that made it difficult to get a lot of research done, uh, cause you just lack the material to even do field trials in many cases. Um, and, and so then the further that we got in that process where we have, you know, this incredible amount of hype, uh, without a lot of boots on the ground, without a lot of actual biochar material, um, it just spun off. And so the hype went in one direction and the contrarians kind of went in another direction and there just wasn't much biochar material available to ground the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I I think there was a couple of things that stalled out. There was some technology development. Uh, It took a while for people to figure out how we could possibly produce biochar cost effective. Um, And there just wasn't much research to support it. And the research Mm -hmm. that was there was kind of all over the place, especially lacking field trials. Um, and, and a lot of the whole biochar idea is biochar as a tool for um, environmental management, particularly climate change mitigation. And there was no pathway to get financial reward for those things. So it, none of that was really helpful. Um, mm-hmm. and, and since you know, the early days, um, much has changed. Now there are technologies to produce biochar um, that are cost effective. Uh, there are more than 20,000 research articles about biochar. Um, I'm not sure how many thousands of those are field trials, but there are lots of field trials. So the, uh, the technology has developed, the research has gone prolific. Um, and also importantly, there has developed a system for financial reward for carbon sequestered, um, which is part of the whole, you know, the whole word biochar came out of a climate change mitigation um, strategy. And so the fact that that we can now get financial reward for climate change mitigation achieved uh, is profound. And I Mm -hmm. think it demarcates two eras in the biochar um, industry. There's kind of before carbon credits and after carbon credits. And and we're still just buried in that periphery. We're in that like fringe, you know, it's the carbon credits are just kind of getting started, but now it can provide uh, financial uh, reward for, um, for a kind of critical component. And, um, so I believe that uh, we've kind of got, uh, wouldn't quite say a perfect storm, but we've got quite a lot of the key elements uh, developed now for, for this industry to actually really take off. All right. Great answer. Um, so, you know, we have our upcoming biomass, International Biomass Conference and Expo in Atlanta. Starts the end of next month, and we're going to have a lot of biomass power producers there. And so I understand you are going to be speaking. I am. Yes. That's wonderful. Um, we always have our u- rooms are usually packed for the biochar panels. So um, we really look forward to having you um, at the conference. And uh, before we wrap up, Josiah, is there anything else that you want to add? Um, well, you know, to all the biomass power plants out there interested in biochar, we'd love to help. That's our goal. Let's, uh, let's, get a, let's make a bunch of biochar and get it in the ground. And the role, of Pacific, the role of Pacific Biochar is to make it profitable and to make it easy for you. Um, and uh, I think we're getting pretty good at it. So um, love to help you out with that and love to see you at the conference. Awesome. We really look forward to it. Um, Josiah, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today and telling us more about uh, biochar and Pacific Biochar. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure for me as well. Thank you so much. 
You bet. We'll see you in um, Atlanta. And to our listeners, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I sure did. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time.